how to generate 1,500 video clips in a few hours with Vertex AI. Welcome to a story of digital ambition meeting an unforeseen reality, a tale of Bill Shock. On August 28, 2025, a free experiment turned into a costly problem. We understand your concern. Please refer to our FAQ. Table. Analysis of Google Cloud billing practices, case studies and conclusions, financial situation, multiple failed attempts to charge funds. One thing that's hitting users right now in the Google Cloud ecosystem is what's called bill shock. Okay, so have you ever played around with some new piece of tech thinking, hey, this is free, only to get hit with a completely unexpected massive bill later? Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. This is the story of how a simple experiment with an AI video tool spiraled into a crazy battle with a tech giant over a bill for almost 3,400 Polish Slotty. We're gonna find out just how a simple test could go so spectacularly wrong. So picture this, it's August 28th, 2025. We've got a developer, Stanislav Tokarski, and he's just testing out Google's new AI video generator. He'd been using the free version, Google AI Studio, totally fine. But then a message pops up telling him to use his Google Cloud API key to keep going. Now, you or I would probably think the same thing he did, that this was just a way to get past some free limit, you know, not a secret handshake to start a paid service. And this, this is where things just go completely off the rails. We're talking less than four hours here. His account goes from a totally normal 200 PLN payment confirmation to a warning about overdue payments, and then boom, a scary alert about suspicious activity. I mean, these automated messages are all over the place, totally contradictory. One minute they're saying, thanks for the payment. The next they're screaming, you're overdue. It makes absolutely zero sense. All right, so what was this crazy expensive experiment all about? Well, Stanislav, thinking he's still in this free sandbox, generates a few short, kind of crummy video clips with a service called Vertex AI. And get this, the results weren't even good. He said only a couple were even remotely useful. But little did he know, in the background, this invisible meter was just spinning and spinning, racking up a massive bill he had no idea about. Okay, this right here is the absolute heart of the problem. It's like two different realities were happening at the same time. From Stanislav's perspective, he's looking at a screen with no price tags, no warnings, no, hey, this is gonna cost you pop-ups, just an invitation to use his key. He thinks he's just continuing his test. But on Google's end, their system saw something totally different. His free trial was long gone. It expired a month ago. In his account, it had been silently, automatically upgraded to a paid plan. And what happened next was just a relentless barrage of payment attempts. His phone must have been blowing up with bank alerts for charges of 1,000, then 1,500, then 2,500, all the way up to 3,000 PLN. And these weren't one-offs. They tried to charge him every single day for more than 10 days straight. It got so bad, he had to call his bank and just block the card. What else could he do? So at this point, Stanislav does what any of us would do, right? He reaches out to Google Cloud Support. He's probably thinking, okay, this is just a simple misunderstanding. We'll clear this up in five minutes. Oh, how wrong he was. Instead, he basically walked straight into a bureaucratic labyrinth that seemed designed to make things worse, not better. And look, Stanislav laid out his case perfectly. He was crystal clear. He said, listen, my issue is not about some hackers stealing my account. This is about you guys not being transparent with your pricing. It's about bill shock, and it's a direct violation of EU consumer rights law. He even cited the specific directive. I mean, he came with receipts, making a logical, legally sound argument. And then you get this response just a few hours later. It's just perfect proof of the complete disconnect. They totally, completely ignore everything you just said. They took his very specific complaint about non-transparent pricing, shoved it into the fraud bucket, investigated for fraud, and then came back with, good news, we couldn't find any fraud. It was a canned response to a question he literally never asked. It's just mind boggling. So his complaint goes on this wild goose chase inside Google's support system. It starts out promising, you know, an agent offers a one-time exception. Okay, cool. But then the case gets handed off to a specialized team. Then it gets sent to a downstream team, 
I don't even know what that is. And that's where it all fell apart. Turns out that mysterious downstream team was the fraud department, and the whole point of his original complaint just vanished into thin air. So after days of just going around and around in circles, with support insisting this was about fraud when it absolutely wasn't, Stanislaw finally had enough. He decided to just cut through all the noise and ask one super simple direct question. How much do you actually think I owe? And there it was, the final number. 3,398 Polish lotties and 37 grosha. That was the official total Google was demanding. We're talking over 800 US dollars for what he thought was a free experiment making a few little test videos. Now, when Google finally gave him a breakdown of the bill, one thing just jumped right off the page. The lion's share of the cost, we're talking over 2,800 PLN of it, came from just one single service, something called VO2 Video Generation. So this wasn't a bunch of small charges adding up, it was one massive, very specific claim. So how on earth could one service cost that much? Well, according to Google's logs, on August 28th alone, Stanislav supposedly generated 1,580 videos with that one service. Let me say that again, 1,580. I mean, that number is just absurd. It doesn't pass the sniff test. The guy himself said he made a few dozen attempts at most. So it leads to a really simple logical question. Is it even humanly possible to do that in 24 hours? So he did the math, and it's so simple, it's brilliant. Let's be super generous and say each video generation, you know, typing the prompt, waiting for it, saving the file, takes just a minute and a half. Well, 1,580 generations would take more than 38 hours of nonstop work. Last time I checked, there are only 24 hours in a day. So the charge wasn't just wrong, it was literally impossible. Okay, and this is where the story really gets bigger than just one guy's terrible week. His case isn't some weird one-off fluke. It's actually a perfect example of a huge systemic flaw in these pay-as-you-go cloud services that can be a real trap for everyday users. You know, there's actually a name for this in the industry. It's called bill shock, and it's exactly what it sounds like. That heart-stopping moment of panic when you open a bill and it's 10, 100, or a thousand times bigger than you ever expected. Usually because the pricing was super confusing or you used something by accident. So, the real kicker is that this doesn't just happen by accident. It happens because of how these systems are designed. A lot of these cloud platforms have no spending limits by default. That means one tiny mistake in your code can literally lead to infinite costs. And the budget alerts, they're often so delayed they show up after the damage is already done. On top of all that, the pricing for these new AI tools is so complex, it's almost impossible for a normal person to figure out. And look, this isn't just speculation. There are documented cases all over the world that show this is a real scary pattern. We're talking about a $72,000 bill from a simple coding mistake that created an infinite loop. Or how about a $6,200 bill from a little two-hour hackathon project? This is not about one person messing up. It's a global problem that keeps happening to developers. So now we get to the fallout, and it's way worse than just a bill he has to fight. Because when Stanislaw refused to pay a charge that was physically impossible, the company decided to use its power to apply some serious digital pressure. Yeah, see, Google didn't just shut off the AI video tool. They shut down his entire billing account, and the collateral damage was huge. It disabled the Google Maps API for his other website, a totally separate, non-commercial hobby project called Travelja.eu. That site was now completely broken, basically held hostage over a billing dispute that had nothing to do with it. And just to really understand the insane power imbalance here, you just have to look at the money. This bill for nearly 3,400 PLN was for an unemployed guy whose total monthly income was less than 1,500 PLN. So this one single bogus bill was worth more than two entire months of his income. It's just staggering. So let's just wrap this up and be super clear. This was never ever about fraud. This was about a user interface that hid the costs. It was about consumer rights, specifically under EU law. And ultimately, it's about holding a massive corporation accountable when their own system spits out a bill for something that is physically impossible. And all of this leaves us with a really big, really important question. This whole pay-as-you-go idea sounds great, right? It promises flexibility. But what this story shows is that it can also be a trap. So, when the billing is a black box, when the data makes no sense, and when customer support is a brick wall, 
Who pays the price? The individual user or the trillion dollar company that created the system in the first place? Bezpłatny eksperyment. Rachunek za tysiąc coś się gdzieś wideo.